Good morning and welcome to Oregon Lutheran Church. We're so glad that you have decided to worship among us this day. Please rise as you are able, facing the back of the sanctuary in the way of the cross. We are gathered in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank 
of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Almighty and eternal God, graciously look down on our weakness. Reach out to us with your majestic right hand and satisfy us with his glory. We ask through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Time for kiddos. We got kiddos. I bet we do. do, 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 do.
the theme to the Andy Griffith Show. Did you know there's words that go with that theme to the Andy Griffith Show? It's actually a song called The Fishing Hole. It is. It's a song called The Fishing Hole. You should look up the words. Gurgle it. It's on there. Now, today in the lessons, we are talking about fishing. Just a tad. Does this look like a fishing net to you? No, it doesn't. What's wrong with it? Can't I fish with this? What's wrong with it? It looks like a... It what? It doesn't look... It kind of looks more like a rock. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Do you think it's big enough to catch much? No. 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 You know where this used to live? Long time ago? In the ocean. Yeah, you think? This has been prettied up, but it used to live on the back of one of my grandmother's chairs. I know. Sometimes it took the place of the cat rug. I think the cat rug is still in Uncle John's house. But my grandmother would sit in her chair and it would look like cats were sitting on her shoulder. Oops, sorry. Because there was this thing hanging on her chair behind her. But sometimes it was one of these. You might call these doilies. That's kind of a fun word, isn't it? Doily. Who came up with that? Doily. But, you know, I would sit back there and when she was holding me, I would put my fingers in these little holes. You know, what do you think she'd do? slap my hand. She might have felt like it. She would tell me, don't put your finger in that hole. It took this long time to make stuff like that, right? Because these are handcrafts. These are handmade. And when you do that, and oh, look, there's one. I bet I did that one. Look at that hole. See that hole? Big as the world. I bet my finger, when I was about your age, went right in that hole. And yanked. What do you think? Okay. So, let me just tell you that for me, this was a fishing net. And I'll tell you why. Because my grandmother talked about Jesus. She talked about Jesus to me while she was holding me. My grandmother had a really rough life. She did. And even through everything rough that she had been through, don't let anybody tell you that Southern people don't always pick cotton, because she certainly did, along with my four aunts and my mother. They picked cotton. They worked really, really hard to make life okay. When something really bad happened. So she would talk to me while I was in her lap about Jesus. She would sing things to me. She wouldn't sing them loud because she didn't want anybody in the family to know she could sing. But she would hum in my ear. And I'd be over there poking holes in this little thing. Right? It was right behind her head. Snuggled up against her. Now, if you want to know the part of the love of God, you take a grandparent if you've got one. And you snuggle up with them. Or somebody that serves as someone that's a good influence in your life. And you snuggle up to them and you listen to them tell you about how God loves them. And how God loves you. Now, Jesus is talking about fishing nets today. He's grabbing disciples. They're dropping everything they've got and they're going to follow him. And he's saying, I'm going to make you fish for people. You, you are fishermen. This is what you do for a living. But I'm going to have you do a different job. I want you to fish for people. Now, my grandmother was my grandfather. My grandmother, did she have to fish for me or was I in the family already? I was in the family already. She knew I was coming to her house. But she could have chosen to not tell me about Jesus. She could have chosen to not sing those songs to me. She could have really slapped my hand when I was messing up her doilies. Instead of treasuring the time that I sat in her lap. So for me, this little piece of material is full of meaning because it's actually a fishing net. She scooped me up with the love of Jesus and told me about him. And this was right there the whole time. She didn't even have to take me really fishing. That's why I don't know how to fish, guys. I'm just saying. I was busy in Grandma's lap with a doily. So, the challenge for all of those people out there and on either side here is to make sure that they're providing fishing nets for folks like you. And for folks who don't know Jesus, Jesus at all. And guess what? You'll find your own version of a fishing net too. Where you talk to a classmate who's having a hard time. You sit down with them. You show them God's love. You show them his care. We fish for people. We tell people about who Jesus is. So God scoops them up and we tell them. He's waiting to do that. He's waiting for you. He wants you to know his love and his care. Does that make sense? Doesn't look like a fishing net, but trust me, it is. 
She could have just sat there with me. Got me to stop crying. But while she had me in her arms, she took the time to tell me about Jesus, to tell me about God's love. So it absolutely is part of what formed my faith life. Okay? What do you see out there today? Quilts, a ton of them. Guess what that is? They look like quilts. They're fishing nets. They're telling people about God's love for them. Wherever they end up, wherever those quilts go, somebody's lost their house, somebody had a flood, somebody had a fire, they don't have much left. Even if they don't live in a cold place, every time they receive one of those quilts, they're going to feel the love of God. It's, it's a quilt, but it's a fishing net. Does that make sense? No? Come here. Let's make it make sense. Come on. I love you. Come on. Pick up one. I'm messing up your display. Sorry. Everybody pick up one. You can put the plate down on the front pew if you want to. Pick up one. I want you to close your eyes for a minute and imagine the worst possible thing that could ever happen to your house or your life. And somebody that you don't even know walks up to you and wraps you up and says to you, Our church was praying about you. We love you. God loves you. We're we giving you this to make sure that you know that God loves you. Because we're not sure that you can feel that right now. So you're going to feel the love while you wrap up in this. And every time you do, isn't that God reaching out and touching somebody? Open your eyes. It looks like a quilt, but it's actually the love of God being sent to people. And that is scooping up all of the people that God wants you to love. Make sense? Does that help? Let's pray about this. You've got one in your hand. Let's all pray about these. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the gifts that you give us each and every day and our own general well-being. We ask you to be with every person who will receive these quilts that they would wrap up in them in your name, that they would know your love and your care for them, that we who are being sent out to provide and to show them your love, that they would actually know that it's true or they wouldn't be receiving these. Help them to see your love and your care. Use the gifts that were brought today for the same reason. And thank you, Lord, that you give us fishing nets so that others can see your love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for being here today. Yep, you can put it right back here on the pew. Oh, absolutely. Thank you for that. It's okay. Isn't it pretty? <clears throat> I'm eating tidy. I love it. Good morning. The first lesson is from the book of Jonah, chapter 3. The word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and call out against it the message that I tell you. So Jonah arose and went to Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly great city, three days' journey in breadth. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's Jonah began to go into the city going a day's journey, and he called out, Yet forty days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They called for a fast and put out and put on sackcloth from the greatest of them to the least of them. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil way, God relented of the disaster that he had said he would do to them, and he did not do it. Here is the reading. 
The second lesson is from the book of 1 Corinthians. This is what I mean, brothers. The appointed time has grown very short. From now on, let those who have wives live as though they had none, and those who mourn as though they were not mourning, and those who rejoice as though they were not rejoicing, and those who buy as though they had no goods, and those who deal with the world as though they had no dealings with it. For the present form of this world is passing away. I want you to be free from anxieties. The unmarried man is anxious about the things of the Lord, how to please the Lord. But the married man is anxious about worldly things, how to please his wife, and his interests are divided. And the unmarried or betrothed woman is anxious about the things of the Lord, how to be holy in body and spirit. But the married woman is anxious about worldly things, how to please her husband. I say this for your own benefit not to lay any restraint upon you, but to promote good order and to secure your undivided devotion to the Lord. Here is the reading. The Holy Gospel according to Mark chapter 1. After John was arrested, Jesus came into Galilee proclaiming the gospel of God and saying, The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Passing alongside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, the brother of Simon, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you become fishers of men. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. 
And going on a little farther, he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, who were in their boat mending the nets. And immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired servants and followed him. The Gospel of our Lord. Please be seated. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Several different techniques have been used upon me to get me out of bed in the morning. Turning the ceiling light fixture on first and then scaring me out of sleep so that I am temporarily blinded. Turning on an AM radio between stations, full blast. Water spritzing bottle, fully loaded. That's a fun one. But usually there's a tiny, tiny bit of time between sleep and awake that is a bit fuzzy at best. A time when I can either respond to the person trying to wake me, <laughs> and depending on how they do it, that can get interesting, or completely ignore them and roll back over. Ignoring them usually means I have made an error that will affect the entirety of my day negatively. Responding to their call, while not my action of choice, would result in a coordinating good thing happening. So today, let's examine a bit closer what's in between there, between receiving the call and seeing the result. John was called to prepare the way of the Lord. He was eventually arrested for that, which was not a positive. At that time, Jesus returned to Galilee to begin his public ministry. The gospel writer is succinct when he tells us what Jesus had to say about that. The time, Kairos, is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Now God has provided this inbreaking of his reign on earth through Jesus Christ. And Jesus himself is the one providing this information as John had prior to Jesus' arrival. Jesus followed that statement with one of extreme urgency. One of those words that people don't like to hear. Repent and believe in the good news. Repent and believe. This tells us that one cannot receive the full benefit of belief without repentance. There's something missing in there. There must be a release a letting go of sin, an admission of our role in the messes of life, to be able to realize the freedom that full belief in our Lord provides. We leave that other stuff behind. And the grace that comes only from Jesus provides cleansing and rebirth and newness of life. As Mark likes to say, immediately, all the way through his gospel, have you noticed? Immediately. After that, Jesus began calling his disciples to the task of ministry. Out of all of the vocations that Jesus could have started with, he chose two sets of fishermen. Jesus did not headhunt from an educational institution, though we won't like for our preachers to be educated, for sure. He did not even consult with area leaders about skill sets of particular folks in the communities that he was passing through. What was the requirement to become Jesus' disciple? Willingness. Willingness. Not apathy. Willingness. Jesus said to Peter and to Andrew, follow me and I will make you fish for people. Now that Greek word for immediately is euthus. They did not hesitate at all but very efficiently and quickly left their nets to follow this man, Jesus. Now that's some kind of magnetism. Something about Jesus made them completely leave their vocation and everything they knew to enter into a relationship with someone they did not know. They followed him, doing what he told them to do, willingness. The next two disciples, James and John, sons of Zebedee, they were found by Jesus mending the nets, getting rid of those holes that we discussed. Mending their nets. I just love 
that Jesus looked at fisher folk and found value in someone who could patch a hole. Someone who could see a problem and not hesitate to mend the situation before it got worse. And fish were lost. And in James and John's case, leaving their father was a huge detail. If you've ever been a part of the family business, you know, leaving that has layers of loyalty and betrayal issues that take time to wrestle through. Not for Zebedee's boys, though. Something about Jesus made them move quickly and follow him. Now, Mark does not take the time to explain why these four men were so quickly willing to leave their lives and join Jesus in this journey. Jesus sought them out. Jesus called them. Mark seems much more interested in letting us know that the appropriate response to the call of our Lord is to see that God is coming near to us and expects us to come near to him. God sent Jesus, and Jesus was traveling around telling the good news. This was a critical time, especially with John in jail. And at that time, as John had been describing, this Jesus actually would be a threat to folks in power, folks who were in control at the time. The kingdom of God is near, is music to our ears because we have hindsight to build our faith upon. For those in power at that time when Jesus is walking around preaching and teaching, everything John was describing and certainly Jesus presence. That alone was an urgent problem. Got to snuff him out. Echoes of Herod. A la stable baby Jesus. Humans like being safeguarded, knowing that we're taken care of, that we what we know is going to hold true, it's going to hold water, that things don't change in surprises that we are unprepared to handle. We get shaken up easily. How many times have we planned out what was going to happen and then only to have a surprise pop out of of nowhere and just, ah, what do we do with that? Do we really like that? You sent the invitation, you had your numbers and your items all planned and sorted out, and three guests brought three others with them because they knew you wouldn't mind. It was only three for them, nine in total. You spent months working on a project, examining every detail, spent countless hours on presentations, and a co-worker sideswipes your presentation and undervalues your work in a single sweep. Those are our everyday types of situations that are entirely frustrating because we have invested and we thought we knew what was going on and someone pulled that tablecloth off the table with the dishes still sitting on it. Well, in today's gospel, God was doing this new thing through Jesus our Lord. God is being the bull in humanity's china shop. When God was doing this sending of Jesus, it seemed like a threat to them, not good news. What might God ask of me when he calls me to leave it all and to follow him? No way, Lord. I've worked too hard for what I've got. I put effort into this goal, Jesus, and I just cannot leave it to do what you're telling me to. God, what you're telling me to do is too risky. I I've calculated I can't just respond and move on this thing. That's too much at stake here to do what you say. I might suffer financially, lose my status in the community. I might appear to be a failure even though you sent the message. Will they see what you're telling me to do? Will they think I've lost my ever-loving mind? Even folks who are believers ask the questions when God calls us. They do it because they love you. They want to protect you. But when the call comes and you respond, the ones who love you might just say this. True story. After all those music lessons, you're going to do what? True story. Or, do you know how old you are to be starting this new thing you're doing? True story. Or even this. You might lose your husband over this. Have you thought about how he feels? Mm. It's a little below the belt. 
I had no idea it started with him <laughs> and prayer. But that's what we hear. Friends and relatives, our own Zebedees left in the boat. Those folks may not understand the path that you're taking because Jesus is working in your heart. He's working on your gut. He may even take hold of your intestines a time or two. When God calls you, you can't escape it. Even if you don't immediately follow, the Spirit will keep working on you. Remember Moses, the but, but, but guy? That's what I call him. We tend to say this, but Lord, that's not my gift. But Lord, you surely meant somebody else. But Lord, I can't do that. And the good news includes Moses' Aaron. When God tells us, no worries. I have that particular part worked out for you. Aaron will talk. I'll talk to you. You talk to Aaron. Aaron will talk to the people. It'll work. We have life goals. We have life missions. We sometimes forget that God himself is on a mission and that he used Jesus to accomplish it. And he continues to use his Holy Spirit to work on every single one of us all the time. When we are baptized, the Holy Spirit possesses us. We ask the Holy Spirit to invade, to break in, and he does. God claims us as his own to define our lives and give us purpose. His purpose. Now trust me, I've also seen folks use the name of the Holy Spirit for their own personal gain as well. And that never ends well. Well, the Holy Spirit told me to fill in the blank with something that's going to benefit them that's not necessarily godly, right? It takes holy wisdom and discernment to figure that out sometimes. But sometimes it's just obviously a strategy to get what they want. That's abuse at the highest level. You're dealing with God. Folks who indulge in this tactic might say things like, you're putting the Holy Spirit in a box if you don't do this thing I'm telling you to. Friends, putting the Holy Spirit in a box is not possible. We just don't have that kind of power. When it's from God, it is not easily mistaken. It usually involves a lifestyle change and sometimes an uncomfortable one. It has a sense of urgency to it keeps nagging at you. And most importantly, it's not about us. It's about God giving himself fishing license and using those nets and those who know how to mend those nets, those who are willing, not apathetic, but willing to follow Jesus to be used for the sake of the others that God loves so much. Now think about these lessons today, all of them. And how they backed that up. First lesson, Jonah. Jonah commanded by God to go to Nineveh more than once and to call them into repentance. Does anybody like to hear that? No. Jonah just knew they would not respond, but they eventually did. And the psalmist was being crushed by oppression. If you listened in your head to any word you sang, and if you don't sing, try it, okay? Crushed by oppression attacked by enemies, but waited for the Lord to act on his behalf, and the Lord did. Paul could not have been popular as he was telling the church in Corinth that they'd better get ready before the Lord's return. And how he said that, did you pick up on that? Now, Paul was not anti-marriage, and Paul was not anti-family. But he was a pragmatist about what discipleship would cost in family relationships. He should know. He did know. Go back and read that. It's very, very interesting. If our Lord stopped by our house or work one day and told us to follow him, would we? Would we be willing to stop whatever we were doing and adapt our thinking to what Jesus was doing and be helpful to him as he did it? And for folks that we don't even know, if you have ever blindly, faithfully followed the Spirit's tug on your heart when the other humans would think you were absolutely off your rocker, you know God never let you down in the mission that he had for you. It might have been challenging, but he never abandoned you. 
And if you're like me, his plan is so entirely different than mine sometimes that the outcome is too good for me to have ever come up with by myself. He's got the whole matrix. I've got this much of it. To be able to catch fish, you have to lower the net. To be able to catch people, you have to let the net go into God's hands completely and rely on Jesus' direction and let the Spirit calm the fears that keep us out of faithfulness far too much. Jesus was guided by God to suffer and die on our behalf and for our salvation. That's some good news right there. That did not look like a victory, though. It looked crazy, which is why folks still yet question the king of our lives and our eternal redemption. Jesus followed through. Even after he questioned his father in the garden, he completed his mission for us and gave up his body and gave up his blood and provided forgiveness for all of us. God's plan, the good news, was always to pull all of his children into the net of his holy kingdom. Jesus provided victory over sin, death, and evil forever. For us to be Christ-like, appreciating the grace that he has provided for us, we must understand that God calls us all and God equips us all. God does not leave us without hope or without a future, but beckons us into relationship with him that increases his kingdom. Children of God. He calls us. Every one of us. He tells our spirit what he wants us to do by his own Holy Spirit. And that struggle we may have is our humanness. Our resistance. But our release of our grip, our adherence to being willing to be used by him for his glory, our pleas for forgiveness when our wills battle God's, those things are holy, godly things, and they are used by God to increase his kingdom. But today, we share in Jesus' body and blood. We receive, we take in, we take into ourselves Jesus' holiness and forgiveness and love. We are fortified by Jesus and his Holy Spirit to do what God is calling us to do. Now, some of you saw me put this up here. Kind of matches. I'm going to have to look at it. Little tiny cup made out of olive wood. Some of your youth have already received these for their first communion. Canon Cress gets his today. Canon, this is from the Holy Land. It's made from the same wood that was in the garden where Jesus was. I brought a whole bunch of these back from the Holy Land, and when I run out, that means I'm going back. Y'all ready? Still have several of these, but this is your first communion. And even if the wine stains the olive wood, which it shouldn't much, you'll forever have it as a keepsake from the place where Jesus actually died, where he gave up his body and his blood for you. And that's why that's important. It's a thing, but I hope every time you see it, wherever you put it, that you will be reminded of his love and his care for you. You have received the most precious gift for the first time here today at communion. You will be receiving it. And we thank God for what Jesus did for you. Because he did it for all of us too. We're all in the net together. We pray that you will always, always be caught up in Jesus' kingdom net. And that you will be willing to listen for his call for you. Whatever he wants you to do with your life. Amen.
the children of God and as such we state our beliefs using the words of the Apostles Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, you show your patience even when we are slow to understand, obey, and proclaim your word. We are often so much like Jonah. Forgive us when we are half-hearted, refusing to repent, or not engaged with compassion as someone else repents. Lord, in your mercy. You called Jonah to preach repentance to Nineveh, and your son called his disciples to proclaim repentance and the coming of your kingdom. Give your church boldness to preach of judgment, repentance, and forgiveness. Help us to be gracious so that many turn to Christ Jesus to be saved. Lord, in your mercy. Many do not want to hear your call to repentance or believe the good news. Some don't tolerate those who do believe. Because of that, Christians suffer throughout the world. Have mercy on your servants and do not let their witness falter. Lord, in your mercy. Have mercy when, like Jonah, we want to run from the task you have called us to. Renew our faith. Give us words that lovingly call others to repentance and trust in you. Shape our actions to model Jesus' compassion. Help us to rejoice when someone surprises us with repentance or newfound faith. Lord, in your mercy. We pray this day for our members in their middle years. Grant them the fire and enthusiasm of youth and the wisdom and humility that comes with years. Form them into fishers of men and women eager to make disciples of your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Bless the leaders of all nations. Give them integrity, wisdom, humility, and sound judgment. Give us grace to live in concord and unity with one another. Be with those who protect this nation, especially our deployed, Jacob, Kyle, Harley, and Banks. Lord, in your mercy. We lift before you the needs of the lonely and bereaved, the forgotten and abandoned, the abused and their abusers. Especially we plead on behalf of loved ones who seek our prayers for healing of body, mind, or spirit including Terry, Jerry, Becky, Raymond, Frank, Bonnie, Sandy, Anne, 
Hill, Logan, Diane, and the family of Raylan Armstrong. Those waiting for test results or surgeries, those battling cancer or PTS, those on our prayer list, and those we name before you now. Give them faith to firmly cling to your promise of health and salvation. Lord, in your mercy. Holy Lord, we remember with reverence and affection our departed loved ones. Keep us united with them in bonds of faith and love. Turn our hearts in repentance and trust toward you. In your good time, deliver us into the fullness of that blessed kingdom announced and promised to us by your beloved Son. With all the redeemed, let us praise and adore you forever. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. We greet one another as we see fit according to our health concerns.
Let us pray. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts. With them, we offer ourselves to your service and dedicate our lives to the care and redemption of all that you have made. For the sake of him who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord. Sharing our life, he lived among us to reveal your glory and love, that our darkness should give way to his own brilliant light. And so with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth. In mercy for our fallen world, you gave your only Son, that all those who believe in him should not perish, but have eternal life. We give thanks to you for the salvation you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Send now your Holy Spirit into our hearts, that we may receive our Lord with a living faith as he comes to us in his holy supper. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. 
in the night in which he was betrayed. Our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, and after he had given thanks, he gave it to them to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Holy Communion, served with bread and wine, gluten-free available to those who need it. We have an open table. That means if you're a believer in Christ and you believe that he is truly present, you are more than welcome to partake. You do not yet partake, you may receive a blessing. And today I'm especially asking that once our uh, folks in the congregation who cannot make their way to the table are fed, that the Crest family would come forward for his first communion. Just
Please rise as you are able. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, you gave your Son both as a sacrifice for sin and a model of the godly life. Enable us to receive him always with thanksgiving and to conform our lives to his, through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. For our faith community, Frank Brady has had some improvement, and we are very, very grateful for that. So glad to see y'all being able to be here today, and our prayers continue for his continued healing. Bill Castor made it home. Yay. So that is good, and she's being cared for there. Raymond Davis, glad to see you today. Continuing prayers for you and your prognoses as they determine what's best for you and how quickly they can make that happen. That would be good. Um, Terry Harrison had shoulder surgery on Friday. He's doing well and should be in your listing, and I don't see him unless I'm missing him. So keep him in your prayers for healing. Sandy Moldovan was in the hospital this week earlier, and she is home and recuperating, and we continue to pray for her. Jerry Peeler, hand surgery, doing well post-surgery, continuing healing for her. Bonnie, glad you're here and are continuing to heal. But, um, other folks that I may not be aware of, please make me aware. Anne, I'm so glad you're okay. Yay. Pastor Heidi had some, some fun things happen last week, and so we're very grateful that she was here and handled things so very well. So we're grateful for that. And thank you for all of you for helping her, and for those who led youth last week in my absence, thank you very much. And thank you for praying for NALC pastors. We did meet in Florida. I did not stay there, obviously. I did not get hit by a flying iguana either. But uh, And I tried to bring warmer weather home, but it doesn't work like that. So sorry. Um, altar flowers are gorgeous, and thank you to the donor of those. This week's schedule. Um, Owings, you're drawing new prayer sisters today. So if you have not received yours or want to put your name in the pot, see Deneen Brown immediately, if not sooner. How very mark of me, right? Immediately. At 6 p.m. today, we have a wine creation session, part two, 21 and over, unless your parents are with you, kind of a thing, okay? So we are doing that today. Thank you, Jordan, for leading that class. It will be in the fellowship hall at 6. Bible study resumes tomorrow. <laughs> Bible study resumes tomorrow. There we go. It's the book of Ruth. It's going to be fun. If you can come at 11, great. If you can come at 6, great. But try to come. One of those two. Uh, hopefully, uh, we try to keep them on the same track so that you can flip-flop as your schedule needs to. Tuesday at 6, the fitness class. We all need that, right? We're getting rid of uh, holiday stuff and inches and pounds. Wednesday, re rehearsals for handbills and choir. Thursday, pantry. Yay. Thank you for those that are serving there. And 7 p.m. If you're a part of any committee, please be here at 7 p.m., I know it's not as convenient when you might already be here at a different time, but we have new people who might be interested in being a part of your committee. At least come and find out who those folks might be so that they don't get discouraged. 7 o'clock committee meetings are meetings to start in here. If you have not yet filled out a green form that's in the Narthex, please do. They're called Time and Talent. I did one of those last year. Well, you may not want to be a part of the same thing. You might want to shift directions. You might want to tell us another skill you've learned. You might be interested in something else, and we might have outdated information. So please do fill those out and turn those in. That helps these committees to function so much better. Uh, we don't meet just to meet. We meet to get stuff done, and we need your input on that. Okay? So uh, next Sunday, Owings has a crock pot meal. Ah! <sighs> 
It's a fundraiser, but you can't even go to McDonald's and eat for less than 10 bucks, right? You can get all you can eat, crock pot meal, Sunday after church. Please plan to stay. And some of you are going to be on a tight schedule anyway because you're coming to adult catechism. <laughs> because you're coming to adult catechism. Yay! At one. And you have youth catechism at two. And Piedmont East is at Union from four to six. And I understand we're doing a service project for Rowan Helping Ministries as well. So that is a lot of activity next Sunday. Advent Lutheran Church would like us to go to an installation of Pastor Sam Margondor. Because of the 28th schedule, I can't go, but the information is there for you if you want to go support a new person in ministry, new call. He's not a new person in ministry. He's in a new call um, in Kings Mountain. That would be a nice little road trip that the weather cooperates and would be very supportive to our pastors. The 28th, Owings. That crock pot meal information is in there. Adults 10, children 6 to 10 is 5, and children 5 and under free. All you can eat, HVAC fund. We all like heat, don't we? We all like air when it's hot, right? Please support that if you can, and thank you, Owings, for pulling that off. Any other announcements that I missed? It's good to be back. Thank you for letting me go. It's good to be back. Yes. Okay. You're doing the Santa bit this week. You're uh, taking all the names. <laughs> Come on, y'all. Okay. So, yes, if you want to be a part of the, the Prayer Sisters community, see Deneen and make sure she's got your name so that she knows how to distribute and, and whose names to put in the pot. Okay? Other announcements? If not? Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen.
The network is God's. Let us all do our part. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. And speak to God. Thank you.